was doing a conference call with Nico Malali discussing some of the uh, more complicated parts for his new custom designed downhill bike. This is an insane project. He left his uh, big corporate sponsor and decided to build his own design downhill mountain bike frame and he's gonna race it on the World Cup. This is nuts. And we've got like three weeks to get it done. So we're uh, giving him a call and we're gonna go over some of the details of the uh, more complicated parts here. And we're hoping to have this released to our programming team and parts machined in less than two weeks. Yeah, what do you think? Are you doing the frame raw? Do you want raw cranks? I don't know, I'm a simple guy. I yeah. like black, I like drawing them. Yeah, keep it simple, it's I easy think to just use. because of the story that it's like this hand-built prototype thing, like having it all raw is yeah. kind of sick, right? Yeah. I'd like to try and get our parts done in like a couple weeks. Yeah, the sooner the better. Like, and we can have Leo work maybe this weekend and like for sure next weekend. Yeah. So. Killer. Yeah. Goodbye. Awesome. We'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Seiko. All, right. All right. Go easy. So, yeah, I mean, this part was a collaboration, right, with 5Dev, 5th Axis, and Nico um, for his custom frame build. Um, you know, looking at it, it's, it's pretty, pretty beefy, pretty mean looking part, like, obviously, for a downhill bike. Take a lot of that impact. Um, so yeah, fortunately we got some cool five axis machines, a bunch of interested engineers that want to get involved and you know be a part of custom cutting edge technology in the bike industry. And you know, that's what brought us here for this collaboration. So we're going to take some metal of the machine, cut this part, and uh, and yeah, take it to the next level. Yeah, so there's some sketchy tool paths coming up soon. <laughs> there's like a couple pockets that they pretty much come full fillet right down to the corner. So to do that, you have to have like some type of tapered tool or barrel end cutter where you can tilt the head of the spindle, tilt the table, contour around it while you're tilting away from the surface that you're cutting the whole time. More rigid setup, more rigid setup translates to being able to run the tool a lot faster, better looking surface finishes. Yeah, over, overall way better process. So uh, we're gonna pull out the OP1 vise, which we've just got the gripper jaws on. We hold onto the raw stock. We've got our OP2 vise right here that we cut the outside profile of the part in. So we're gonna drop the part right down into here, matches the contours of our finished profile. So tighten it down. Essentially your, your part profile matches the the profile of the jaw that you're now holding the part with. So tap it down a little bit, torque it, and then we're good to go. We pull up the OP2 program real quick. This is it. Reset memory. Two. Let's take some measurements, make sure we're in spec. Looks like we're right, right about there at nominal. Make a small adjustment before the next part, but 0 0.01 millimeters, less than a thousandth of an inch, pretty darn good for first shot. Say we can use this thing. Yeah, now that we've got this part off the machine, next step, we're gonna send it out to Frank the Welder in Vermont. He's gonna weld this thing up to uh, one of the new frames that Ben Arno developed for him. Um, hopefully get some test footage here soon. If you haven't checked out their channel yet, feel free to do so. We've got some pretty cool videos on how these frames were developed and you know, probably get some cool footage of Nico testing them out. Uh, 
stuff. If you haven't checked it out yet, feel free to do so. Educate yourself. Wreck <laughs> yourself before you check yourself. Call it a day.